As we enter the spring season, many of us get kind of sparked and excited to do some spring cleaning. And I certainly just had an urge in a spot where I decided to completely uh, pull apart my closets and reorganize and do spring cleaning. And I had tons of bags that I hauled off to a combination of a, a good friend and uh, goodwill. And I'm wondering today if you have ever thought about spring cleaning, not that physical clutter, but the mental clutter. The clutter that builds up in your mind when you aren't thoughtful in your interactions. What do I mean by that? Well, when you are not thoughtful, the opposite is you're reactive. You're on autopilot. You're just in default mode. So somebody uh, says something that makes you angry and you yell. Or you get an email that is really harsh and you pound back an equally harsh response. And then later, sometimes it's immediately, Sometimes it's the next day or days later, you start to think, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I say that? And the regret, the frustration, the uh, feeling of, gosh, I wish I could take that back, takes over. Those mental tapes that start to play fill your head and create that mental clutter. That's what I'm talking about. That clutter that starts to feel heavy and weigh us down because, oh, I did something I shouldn't have done. I said yes, and now, I said yes weeks ago, and now I'm here on the day of the event, and why, what was I thinking? Why did I say yes? I hate when I do that. I wanted them to like me or I wanted to do the right thing. But sometimes the right thing in the moment, if you don't pause and really think about what do I need, you can do the right thing for someone else, which may not be the right thing for you. Now, for some of you may, may be thinking, well, isn't that the compassionate thing to do? And of course it is, and sometimes that is the, the best choice. But if you do that over and over and over again by default, and it's not conscious, what happens, and I see this happen with my clients a lot, is that resentment builds up. And all of a sudden, there's a edginess, there's a heaviness, there's an impatience. And that's where I talked in one of my uh, weekly videos about my confusion for a long time when Brene Brown would say, the most boundaried people are the most compassionate. That didn't make any sense to me. Well, now I get it. When you set boundaries, healthy boundaries, with love, with compassion, you make time and energy and space for what you want in your life. And then you have more energy, more joy, more capacity to give to other people. Not out of fear of letting them down, not out of guilt, but out of love and out of compassion. And that clears out that mental clutter. That just like my closets, I mean, I'm pointing that way because that's where my my closets are, were overwhelming. They were, oh my gosh, stacks and stacks of clothes and different seasons and different sizes. I pulled it all out and I went through it and I simplified and I woke up the next morning feeling lighter. It's the same way when you can do spring cleaning for your mind, when you can clear that mental clutter. So, so how do you do that? You might be wondering, like, I, I need that. I need that. How do I do that? Well, you build your core. You build your thoughtfully fit core. And if you remember, your core is three simple steps. They're simple, but they're not easy. 
they're powerful. You pause and think and then act. That pause may be internally. You get the invitation of the request to volunteer. And instead of just hitting reply on autopilot, on default, you pause and you think, huh, is this the highest and best use of my time? And if the answer is no, you can still give back to that cause, that organization, that person in a way that feels like a win-win. In a way where you are not just on autopilot saying yes and then feeling resentful later that you gave up your only Saturday this month and now you're volunteering. That pause also may be in the moment when you're with another person instead of reacting and being frustrated and angry in that moment, you may take a pause and take a deep breath and count to 10. You may request a pause. You know, I'm feeling a little bit uh, frustrated, angry, triggered. Can, can, we, can we come back to this? Can I, can I just take a break and go for a walk for 20 minutes and come back to this when my head is clear and when I'm more likely to be able to engage in a positive way? And then you act. So oftentimes that think is a question. When you ask a question, you naturally have to think. And so that is oftentimes, well, sometimes it's a question for yourself. What do I need right now? What's hard about this? What's my pattern that creates this mental clutter late, later? And sometimes that think is with another person. That question is with another person. What's happening for you? I'm feeling like there's some tension here. What do you need? How can we get back to a place of harmony? And by addressing it in the moment, you can prevent that mental clutter from building up when later you didn't have that crucial, difficult conversation and state your truth with compassion. And then later you're heavy. You can't fall asleep because you're replaying it over and over again. And you don't know when you can and should go back and have that conversation. And the longer it goes, the harder it gets. And the more you convince yourself that it's too late. And then, you know, we can keep playing that out. It keeps spiraling. So, if there's conversations you need to have, do your spring cleaning. Go have those tough conversations. If there's boundaries you need to set, do your spring cleaning. Set those boundaries and communicate them. If there's yeses that you gave previously that really need to be a no, do your spring cleaning. Go clean that up. And yes, you can change your mind. That's okay. I promise. I give you permission. Just be authentic. Be transparent. Deliver the message with compassion. Every time I do this, I'm amazed at how well it's received. I'm scared. I'm fearful that somebody's going to be angry, upset. And they're not. So, I invite you right now in your life to take a pause and to think, ask yourself some questions. Where is their mental clutter and what's it getting in the way of and what's it preventing you of having more of in your life? And go do your spring cleaning so you can have more time, more stillness, more joy, more harmony, and then act by doing it. And let me know how it goes. I'll tell you what, feels pretty darn good. Thanks for joining me. I'm Darcy Loma and I love being on this journey with you. Share with me what you're learning along the way so we can keep growing together. Take care everybody. Happy spring.